All right, today we're going to be looking at the sine and cosine ratios and finding angles and missing side lengths. So as you recall, trigonometric functions sine, cosine, and tangent are used to help you find the side or angle measure of a right triangle. So we've used a tangent already, which involved opposite and adjacent sides. Sine and cosine will involve either the opposite and hypotenuse, or for cosine it will be adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay, keeping in mind your hypotenuse is always opposite your 90 degree angle, and the sides opposite angle one and two will depend on which trig function we're gonna have to use. All right, and that's all gonna depend on the combination of um, angles and sides that we have. Okay, so as a quick review, sine of any angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. If you're at angle one, the opposite side would be here. If you're at angle two, the opposite side would be here. Hypotenuse is always the same. If you gotta use cosine, cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, hypotenuse is always opposite your 90. So if you're at angle one, the adjacent side would be here. And if you're at angle two, your adjacent side would be here. So it's all gonna depend on what angle you have involved as to whether you use sine or cosine or tangent. All right, since we already did tangent, now today's lesson is focusing solely on sine and cosine. All right, so we wanna find the sine of angle P and the cosine of angle P ratios and then find the angle measures, okay? So sine of angle P is equal to, from angle P's perspective right here, the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now remember, the hypotenuse is always opposite your 90 degree angle, so it's always gonna be this 14. With respect to P, the opposite side is the four root 10. Because remember, sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So we wanna keep that. All right, our hypotenuse is 14, and now if we reduce this ratio that we wanna find, 4 and 14 divide by 2, so we're going to get 2 root 10 over 7. That's the ratio. Now, just as we did with the trigonometric function of tangent, when you want to find an angle, you're going to invoke the inverse function. So we're going to get the sine over to the other side here, but we're going to leave the angle P on, on this left-hand side. So to get the angle now, we're going to do sine inverse sine of... 2 root 10 over 7. So you're going to get your calculator out and you're going to make sure you're in degree mode. That's going to be a really important. Okay, You'll get a totally different answer if you're in any other mode. So we're in degree mode. We're going to invoke the um, inverse sine function, which is above sine. So second and inverse sine. And then you can grab your um, fraction button and you're going to put 2 and then square root which is the second square, x squared button, 10, over seven, and then arrow off and close your parens, and it will look like this. Now hit enter. Remember we're finding an angle measure, and angle measures are always rounded to the nearest degree. So it's 64.6, .6, so we're gonna make it 65. So angle P is equal to 65 degrees. Now, you must show all of this work so that we can see that you understand how to get it, what to invoke, and that you're doing it correctly. All right, so that's a, that's a mandatory. Now we want to do the cosine of angle P. Well, cosine, as we recall, is the um, adjacent side over our hypotenuse. So that's the cu, C O H, cu, all right? So our adjacent side with respect to angle P now, so notice we're still on angle P here. The adjacent side is six, and the hypotenuse is still 14. So reduce that ratio by twos, and we're gonna get three over seven, and that's the ratio for the cosine of angle P. If you want to find the angle measure of P, we're gonna bring that cosine to the other side by invoking the inverse cosine of 3 over 7. Now, think about it. We're finding angle P. Do you think it's going to be the same as the angle P that you found for sine? It's in the same triangle. So let's see what happens. So we're going to do second cosine to invoke the inverse cosine. You can grab your fraction button and put 3 over 7, arrow off, and there you go. Hit enter. 
and you get 64.6, um, which gives us approximately 65 degrees. And we should actually do that here with the equal sign because it is an approximate because we're rounding to the nearest degree. And it makes sense that both of these will give you the same angle measure because it is the same angle, okay? So what you notice is that sine and cosine of the same angle uh, will give you the same you know, angle measure when you're trying to find that angle, although the ratios are different because of you know, what you're dealing with with respect to sine or cosine and where those side positions or the information you have from the side positions is given. All right, let's look at another one. All right. Let's find angle Q. All right, so we want to find angle Q's measure. Now, we have all information here. Okay, we have all of these. We have three, four, and five. We can use any trig function we want because we have all the information we want on here. So from angle Q's perspective, if we use the sine of angle Q, we're going to get, okay, with respect to Q, remember this is always our hypotenuse. Sine is opposite, which would be three, over hypotenuse, which is five. Well, what if we wanted to use cosine? Okay, because we have all of the measures of the sides, so we're, we, we can do anything we want. If we use cosine of Q, all right, with respect to Q for cosine, the adjacent side, because remember cosine is CAH, ka, it's four over the hypotenuse. So notice how our ratios are different. And if we want to use tangent, which we can here because we have all three sides, we're not locked into a specific side combination. Tangent of Q is TOA, which with respect to Q, the opposite side is three and the adjacent side is four. It's three over four. So notice how our ratios are all different, but let's see what they give us for an answer. So angle Q, because you're finding an angle, you're invoking the inverse function, so inverse sine of 3 fifths. If you were going to do cosine and find it, you're going to find angle Q is equal to the inverse cosine of 4 fifths. And if you were using tangent for this one, then angle Q is equal to the inverse tangent of 3 fourths. All right, let's do each one of those on the calculator. Let's start with the inverse sine. Again, make sure you're in degree mode. Inverse sine, get your fraction button of 3 fifths. Hit enter, and you're going to get about 36.86. Since we're looking for an angle, we're going to round it to 37 degrees. So angle Q from sine's perspective is 37 degrees. Now the question is, do you expect angle Q if you use any other trig function to be different? So let's look. All right, let's clear and let's do second cosine. Invoke the inverse cosine. Grab your fraction button, four fifths. And we get 36.8 and it's 37 degrees. So it's approximately 37 degrees again which makes sense because it's angle Q, it should be the same. And if we use the tangent, angle Q is approximately equal to inverse tangent, fraction button, three over four, and we will get again 36.8, which is approximately 37 degrees. So again, if you have all three sides, you can choose what you want to use as far as trig functions to help you find a missing angle. So this is 37 degrees. And of course, you can always calculate by subtracting 90 to get angle P if it was asked for. Okay. All right, so now let's just do a couple of random problems here of using sine or cosine. Okay. We want to find x, round to the nearest degree, if it's a, an angle, and sides to the nearest tenth. All right, so from x perspective, 
we have, this is the hypotenuse, always opposite 90 degrees. What we have from X perspective is an adjacent side and a hypotenuse. So when you're looking at Sokotoa, we're going to use cosine because it's adjacent hypotenuse. So cosine of the angle equals adjacent side, 8, over the hypotenuse. We can reduce that if you wanted to know the ratio only, okay, which is going to be 4 over 9. But again, you don't have to reduce if you're finding the angle. Remember to find the angle. You're invoking the inverse function, so you're getting the cosine on that side. So x equals the inverse cosine. And you can do 8 over 18, or you can do x is equal to the inverse cosine of 4 ninths, and you're going to get the same answer as long as you reduced 4 ninths correctly. So calculator, inverse cosine, okay, fraction button, 8 over 18, and you're going to get approximately 63.6, .6, so approximately 64 degrees. So you have found angle x using cosine. You could not use sine because you did not have in enough information to do that. All right, next one. We're missing a side length. Again, this is our hypotenuse that we're missing. We've got angle 65 that's given. And when I'm looking at angle 65, I notice that the only other side I have is opposite. And I have hypotenuse. So, so Katoa, we're going to use opposite over hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine. Sine of 65 degrees equals our opposite side of 10 over our hypotenuse. Remember, this is a number, so we treat it like a number. We're going to cross multiply. We're going to get x times the sine of 65 degrees equals 10. And we're going to divide by that weird number six of sine of 65 degrees. Sine divided by sine is going to be 1 because it's the same angle, so it leaves us with x equals 10 over sine of 65 degrees. So now you get your calculator and you do, you can use your fraction button if you want, so 10 over, hit the sign button, not the inverse, the sign button, put in 65 and close it, just like that, hit enter, and you'll get 11.03. Now we want to round to the nearest tenth, so you're going to round approximately 11.0. Okay, you have to fill in the tenths position. All right. And that's how we find x for the side length of the hypotenuse. All right, and one more to do. All right, we are, have our hypotenuse on the side opposite our 90 degree angle. With respect to angle 40, which is the angle provided for us, we have an adjacent side and we have a hypotenuse. So we go through Sokotoa and we're going to use cosine because that's our adjacent hypotenuse. So cosine of 40 degrees equals our adjacent side is 6, our hypotenuse is x. We're going to cross multiply and get x times the cosine of 40 degrees equals 6. And we're going to divide by four, cosine of 40 degrees. They will cancel to a 1. So we're going to get x equals 6 divided by the cosine of 40 degrees. Get your calculators out. Okay, get your fraction button. And we have 6 over cosine. Remember not to hit inverse here. Just cosine of 40 degrees and hit enter. And you're going to get 7.83. We want it rounded to the nearest tenth, so it's 7.8. So x is approximately equal to 7.8, whatever unit that is. And that is how you use sine and cosine, in addition to um, tangent, to help you find missing side lengths or angles.